What is up, everyone? Welcome to L2R2 PlayStation Podcast. We have a special episode. Today, we're joining, we are, well, reacting to the PlayStation State of Play uh, event happening right now. In a couple of minutes here, I got Callum Monroe, my indie game dev, and my UK bro from another mum. Callum, thank you for joining me here. How excited are you for the State of Play? Yeah, very excited, uh, even though the music's kind of making me feel a bit scared. <laughs> yeah. um, and the imagery's not the nicest either. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited to, to see hopefully some cool announcements and as always to see whatever backlash it will bring as well, because that's always fun. Yeah, they didn't do enough or they did too little yeah. or uh, it's often yeah. like the the issue with um, with Nintendo had their direct recently and it, it was a lot of hype and also the internet just takes over where they kind of create the hype and then they didn't supply yeah. what they wanted. Yeah, well, that's that's yeah, like you said, that's the internet's fault for thinking nintendo still make good games so uh, that's uh, that's on them <laughs> those are fine words callum <laughs> well callum as far as uh we got a couple minutes here what 10 ish minutes uh, we compiled some predictions um stuff from around the net and stuff that i that i personally thought but um with some of these oh my dog is attacking me right now what'd you do Lulu? <laughs> okay so for some predictions here so they did let's give a rundown i got this rundown from from your gamer so as far as what to expect, updates and deep dives for 10 games coming to PS4 and PS5, including new game announcements and updates on some of the third-party and indie titles shown off in June 2020's PS5 Showcase event. The show will be about 30 minutes. There's no focus on hardware, so no focus on that uh, PSVR 2 or whatever they will call it, which they announced recently. Um, but let's list off some of these predictions. The first one I have, as far as third-party goes, would be an update on Final Fantasy 16. Do you think we'll see some of that today? Oh yeah, I hope so. It'd be it'd be really great if if we could uh, you know get something about this. There's, it's been in the news recently anyway. They've been sort of um, releasing some extra details here and there about it. So hopefully you know we'll get a date or a year or something. I'm hoping very very uh, naively for it to come this year, maybe end of the year. But I'd imagine it'll be 2022 um, if if we do get something. But yeah, I think that's very likely. We'll see we'll see some more of that. Yep. Um, yeah, some gameplay would be great. An actual date would be great. Um, so we got, uh, I, I expect to see this Returnal. Um, maybe they touch on this, maybe not, but we're going to get this in March 2021. Maybe they pad the stream by kind of updating us. Do you think it's, we'll see uh, any of that? May now, isn't it? It's, I think it's been delayed to May now. Has it? Okay. I had it at March. Yeah, or to, to somewhere. Some, some point further than March, I think now, yeah. Which is a shame. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 30th of April. That's some old information I have. Yeah, because I just Googled it. But you're right. It was a couple weeks ago they actually pushed it further away. Yeah. So. Okay. But do you think they showed yeah, enough yeah, already? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we might get a little bit more because um, I think they released some new images really recently as well. So maybe there's some footage to go with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd be, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that as well. I mean, they, there's 10 games, so there's quite a lot of room for... Uh, you know, lots of different things. So yeah, uh, hopefully we, we can see more of that as well. One thing I was thinking of, maybe out of left field, but we have the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. They did. Mm. They just announced that they were going to get a current gen upgrade for Xbox for PS5. And then there's going to be a Switch version. Do we see maybe some next gen footage on PS5? They have, Sony has a pretty good connection with Activision. Maybe we see that as a reveal. Yeah, maybe, maybe some PlayStation exclusive uh, junk or something like a skin or or whatever um right but yeah that'd be interesting to see I, I you know i played a little bit of it when it first came out and um so yeah you know it might be a good reason to jump back into it yep exactly so we got uh re village do you think we see anything from that it's coming out in may is it uh maybe the capcom will have their own stream showing off more information do we get i'm predicting maybe a demo they announce mm -hmm. i know that's kind of crazy what do you think yeah, I think they've already said that there's another demo coming anyway, like a proper one for all platform or right. for all the platforms that's coming to. Um, so yeah, that, that could be a good another reason to show off some more gameplay. I think we've seen quite a lot of it though, so maybe it will just be like a Capcom tweet or something announcing it. Maybe maybe they they don't want to show off too much more footage. Um, but yeah, maybe. I mean, it's always a a you always can expect something Resident Evil related in these because we've seen lots of state of plays. I think it was state of play that announced resident evil 3 um we've seen village stuff um on it before as well so it's very at home sort of in this kind of presentation so we might see something 
We might. I, I do think the uh, same with you that we've seen enough and that demo is eventually mm-hmm. coming out, but maybe it won't be announced here or shown off here. But uh, yeah. another one is uh, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. So this was shown off during the PS5 initial showcase. It is a third party game, but they showed it off during that PS5 event. Do you think we see that here maybe? I think maybe there's been lots of rumors about it being the, a PlayStation Plus game, which would be really interesting. Oh. Um, and if so, I think we will get regardless whether it is or not i think we will uh it will be revealed what march's games will be uh this uh in in this presentation as well just because they've left it quite late that i'd I'd say you'd normally know by now what's coming yeah um so i think maybe it's going to be a good one uh uh, final fantasy 7 remakes also been rumored which would be unbelievable if that was to be a playstation plus game but you know again they're all rooms at the moment but um it's looking like there might be an interesting reveal for that, which is going to maybe be safe for this. Yeah, that'd be great as a PS Plus game. So we mm-hmm. got um, some other, you know, predictions, gen design. Do we see something from them? So that, that's the team initially behind Ico, Shadow of the Colossus. They did tease their next project in a really small thumbnail a couple of weeks ago. Maybe we see that here. Do you think that's still far off? Yeah, I don't know. Um, are these the same guys that did like The Last Guardian as well, or are they a different? I think that was handed off. It's it's a bit muddy. That was handed off to um, the Japan studio, Sony Japan. I think they finished that, but that team have initially okay. sectioned off and started their own project. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, perhaps I haven't really heard much about. Um, is they're not really a studio that I've uh, followed or anything? But yeah, yeah, if they're if they're working on something, I know that they're normally you know in bed with PlayStation, so. Uh, right. It makes sense again to to have something shown here. Now another one here is: uh, Do we get to see some GTA news? GTA Five. They uh, started off that PS Five initial reveal launch by yeah. showing off GTA. <laughs> just the fact that we're getting a next gen version. Do they maybe show that off here? I hope not. Just because I think when when they showed off the GTA PS Five thing, everyone was like, "Like why? Like we don't care." Yeah. It's, it's kind of like. But E3, when EA show off FIFA, it's like, who's this for? Like nobody, right. if they're either going to buy it or they're not, this isn't going to attract any people on the fence to it. You know, GTA Five is such a massive game now that it doesn't need marketing or showing off. Everyone knows what it is, and everyone will buy it regardless. So, yeah, I hope that they can fill that time with something that isn't that. I agree. Yeah, I think chances are they will, but I hope they don't. Uh, what about Call yeah. of Duty? So it's too early to tease the next Call of Duty, which is inevitable, you know, in fall 2021, but maybe some remaster news or PS5 upgrades for like other uh, Call of Duty games that are released on PS4. Yeah, maybe some, again, to do with Activision, isn't it? They they like to sort of have little um, promotional things. So maybe, um, hopefully it's them saying that they're going to compress the size of, of the new Call of Duty because it's just... yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I actually was uh, thinking of buying the new Call of Duty on PS5 recently, and I was about to like check out and everything, and then I saw it was 220 gigabytes, uh, like on the store page, and, I, a big and boy. I was just like, "No, yeah, there's no way." I've never even contemplated downloading something that big. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just ridiculous. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't end up getting it. So, but yeah, I mean, Call of Duty is Call of Duty. We we might get something to do with that, right? So now moving on to some first party stuff quickly, we got Ratchet and Clank. You think we see some attention on Rift or they push that off? It's still a good way, a couple months away. So do you think they focus on that? Yeah, maybe some story, uh, a story related sort of video. We haven't seen much on that, I don't think. Um, so yeah, maybe, you know, so, so a, more, a, a good chance to show off some more of the visuals and maybe what we can expect from a story perspective. Yep. What about uh, Gran Turismo 7? So that was just very recently delayed to 2022. Do you think we get at least some gameplay of that to kind of ease the the burn? I don't think so. I think that if we were going to get gameplay, they would have announced the the delay there. Um, so I think that that's showing that it needs a lot more work. They're probably not wanting to show anything off at the moment, I'd imagine. But yeah, I mean, again, it's a big first party game, so you never know. True. Yeah. Moving on to some of the big dogs here. The big, uh, you know, hope is that we see some Ragnarok gameplay. We see, hopefully not, but maybe push to 2022. What do you think about seeing Ragnarok here? Yeah, I think it's uh, probably the, the one thing I would I would properly predict is is some God of War Ragnarok gameplay or or something. 
um, because I, as much as I hope it isn't, I think it probably has been pushed to 2022. Um, and I think that'll be a good way to announce the delay, especially so close to Gran Turismo, you would have thought that they want to announce these delays quite quickly between each other. They want to like, drag it out. So um, this could be a good way to uh, to do that. And I know Cor Corey Barlog's been tweeting some shenanigans about the state of plays. So, he has. Uh, whether or not he's just winding everyone up, which he likes to do, <laughs> that, that could also be. Yeah, I hope he's he's commenting because he has something to show. I mean, if they don't yeah. make it for this state of play, I have now officially zero hope for it hitting 2021. <laughs> but um, yeah. and I'm, I was always fine with it being 2022, anyways. But it is what it is. Do you think we see that secret San Diego studio show off Uncharted or whatever game they're working on? Oh, that'd be so great. I'd I'd love to. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see just something new that isn't necessarily. No Horizon Two, or I mean, God of War, I suppose is still quite new, but but you know, so, something that is unexpected to a degree, or uh, something like Resistance uh, remastered, or something like that. I agree. So let's see some of the big ones here. We got forty-two <laughs> seconds left. Any Last of Us predictions? Last of Us Two factions? I think you can say any last words then. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, again, that's something that needs to be shown at some point. Cause that's been a while since anything's been said about that. So. This could be a great time. I mean, the problem is there's just so much that we want to see in this short right. kind of time. Um, and I mean, any of it could be there. So I just hope we get some exciting stuff to talk about. And if not, there's always the next one, I suppose. So uh, yeah, let's see what see what happens. Last prediction, NAC 3, Resistance Remastered. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We got three yeah. seconds and it's starting now. Oh boy. Resistance first. Come on. <laughs> Just get out of the way. When you said that, I thought that was the stream audio, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> From the get go. No, it'll be Crash PS5. This is coming soon, isn't it? In your it is. Future. Shocking events that will change the course. There's lots of awesome updates and additions. I do want to play this, but that's just brutally same. hard. Yeah, same. Uh, I do want to jump into this. I feel like this is more approachable than the other ones, but maybe not. Yeah, it does look very nice. That includes 4K at 60 frames per second, adaptive triggers, 3D audio. Yeah, I also don't mind that 60 frame per second mode. I think that could really make this game pop, and they got the 4K. Yeah. We find the evil masterminds, Neocortex and Dr. Entropy, escaping a one-spot inescapable interdimensional prison, leaving giant holes in the universe. What follows is a mind- yeah, I don't know if I needed them to focus on this for the one of 10 games, because we kind of all, you know, we know what's coming. We've already seen some yeah. footage. This game's already out, too. Yeah. It's, uh... Bandicoot has always looked pretty suave. Yeah, I mean, like, we already knew all this was happening. It's nothing new. Right. But maybe it's you know a minute and a half they focus on it it's fine probably some errands to run there's little time to wait on loading screens the dual sense wireless controllers bring adaptive triggers to your fingertips it does look really good oh yeah and and to be honest i haven't actually seen much gameplay of this game so in a way i'm kind of glad i'm getting to see it but i'm sure more people have have uh, already seen this yeah i've watched a bit of gameplay some reviews I think a demo on PS5 couldn't hurt, but I don't know if people really need anything to convince them. It's it's Crash, you know? Nah, yeah, like, yeah, I think you sort of know what you're going to get. I'm glad that, that they're using that. The card integration, yeah, could be really good for this game. Yeah, I was playing a, a couple of weeks ago. I played a bit of the, sack, the new Sackboy game and that... Uh, uses it really really well oh. i need to lean on that more i did use it a very very lightly on spider-man miles morales but i need to really take advantage of that card thing i used it on um i can't remember the name of it now the astros playroom thing oh. um and i was able to like really easily watch videos on where to like get the collectibles that i was after and stuff it's actually really intuitive but the problem is we gotta wait for it to be used more Right. Welcome back, Crash. Gang's all here on today's new edition of State of Play. We've got some great updates lined up for you.
First, let's check out the latest on an eagerly anticipated Returnal. coming to the PS5 console. Softening the delay, maybe. Yeah. Hey everyone, we at I wouldn't mind if they dropped a very short demo just to get drum up some more uh, hype for this game because I wonder if this is going to kind of miss people. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a lot of unfair criticism online, I think. You know, people saying it's not a AAA game and not worth the money. And it's like, it looks great. And it's made by an amazing studio. And every studio has got to make their first AAA game at some point. So, right. Um, and I think it looks amazing. Oh, yeah. Maneuvering your way above and around enemies be the survivor. It looks really nice. Yeah, it looks amazing. And I think they're following in the footsteps of what they did with PS4, dropping um, the side scroller that they did. And I'm blanking on the name. Um, Resogun. The way they used that, that for a while was my go-to PS4 game because it just showed off the just the visuals and the, the power of the PS4. And so I think this is also in that same vein. Yeah. So it's the roguelite. Interesting. Enemies will appear in new locations. That's cool. You to think fast. Here you can That's very cool. Yeah, I like that. It reminds me a little bit of um that movie. I think it's called something different in uh United States, but it's called Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. Yes, yeah. Um, where he keeps dying and then he sort of uh relives it every time yep yeah it's like edge of tomorrow and then at some point they change it to like die repeat die or something yeah. weird yeah like I... a way worse name <laughs> yeah <laughs> like edge of tomorrow is a really great name yeah but yeah that to make it more obvious <laughs> right listen dummy if he dies yeah. he comes back it's tom cruise put that in the title too yeah yeah yeah, this is a unique choice. I don't think they've revealed that this is going to have that roguelike setup for the uh, for the levels. Mm. No, I, I didn't realize. I mean, the, the whole Returnal and the whole time loop kind of thing vibe I think we got, but it didn't. It never really confirmed that that would affect the gameplay like that. Right. Or maybe it did, and I'm just stupid. <laughs> I'm getting kind of control vibes. It seems like they're merging, you know, weird aspects to what's going on that don't quite make sense. Because, like, why is this regular house in space somewhere? Uh, it's going to be very existential and mm -hmm. cognitive and all that. Oh, they just showed off that hallway that got everyone else off guard because it looks like the hallway in PT. Yeah. yeah. It's that same little area. Next, let's take a closer look at a high-impact new PS4 game called... Do we have to? Really? <laughs> Come on, this might just be the internet overhyping again, but I was expecting yeah. some... Because this is the first day to play of the year, some big stuff, and we've already seen this at Nintendo's Hi, recent Direct. From Bell and Studios. We're an indie developer based in I didn't even see... I didn't see this at Nintendo, but that makes it even worse. They showed it there, yeah. ...action game for PS4 where rival crews settle their scores with epic dodgeball battles. Knockout City is easy to pick up and play, but there's a lot of depth here. And I don't want to crap on it. it. Looks, it's fine, cool game, but I'm, you know, I'm ready for some big announcements. But this might just be me, you know, overhyping it. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice and everything. <laughs> this could be a great uh, PlayStation Plus game for sure. Yeah. To start off the bat, just like Destruction All Stars did, if this came there first, I think that'd be a yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I was definitely getting that kind of vibe from it. I'm just so bored of online things now. I just have nothing. Right. They just do nothing for me anymore. Yeah, and a lot of them follow this Fortnite vibe. So they're trying to, you know, trick kids into thinking they downloaded Fortnite and by playing this game and. Destruction had the same issue. <laughs> yeah. It's great art, though. It, it looks really nice. It's just not for me. Yeah. 
Each map features a unique mechanic. In Back Alley Brawl, you can hop into a tube and make a quick getaway or use them to sneak up on your opponents. Caught empty <laughs> handed, you can literally become the ball. So while this thing is going, uh, some of the other predictions I didn't get to, do you think we see anything from that rumored Konami um, reboot of their other series or bringing them back to life? Do you think that's showing off here? Is that too crazy? Yeah, I'd like to see some Silent Hill and, or, you know, Metal Gear and Castlevania or whatever it would be, but I don't know, I'm feeling less, uh, I'm, I'm feeling less promise from, from this. I know yeah. it's early on, but. Sure. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I think there's a few that you'd definitely imagine are, come, are gonna be shown, so I, I don't know where that one sort of fits in, because that would be just too too good. That'd be like end of the show kind of thing. Time for something new. Oh, Here's your oh, first look at an upcoming oh, PS5 game slow from the team at Slow Clap. Slow Clap. Slow Clap. Looks like Dishonored. No, maybe not. They made Absolver. Oh, okay. About to whoop some ass. This is like that scene in Daredevil on Netflix. Mm. Where he's basically fighting a bunch of dudes in a hallway and it's yeah. awesome. In the apartment. Yeah. You just grow a beard. <laughs> That's what happens when you get stabbed. <laughs> so it's also roguelike. This looks really cool. Yeah. It's like if John Wick didn't have weapons, he just had to physically yeah. kick everyone's ass. Sifu. That looks great. Seafood. That looks really cool. Interesting. 2021. That was the debut of Sifu coming to the PS5 console later this year. Now let's get an update yeah, that's really on cool. Solar Ash, an epic new PS5 adventure from Heart Machine. Solar Ash. I don't know if I've heard that. I think I've seen this. I didn't quite remember the name. Hyperlight Drifter developers. Gotcha. I, believe. I can tell with the style. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Preston, creative director of might know us as a team drifter. Today I'm here Solar Ash is a stylish three platform focused on and the game is set inside a giant black hole, Ultra Boy, assuming everything you play as Ray. So this reminds me of Void Runner is cool. Void Runner? Anomaly. That's a cool, cool name. This reminds me a bit of, there's a recent PS4, PS5 game around the launch of the PS5 that had you running in a similar fashion. I know you shoot bows. Man, I'm blanking on the name. Oh, The Pathless? The Pathless, yeah. Yeah. But obviously its own kind of thing, but it just reminds me. Yeah. I'm digging the movement. The traversal is really cool. Yeah, it looks it looks nice. As you journey to save your planet, find yourself face to face with grotesque and violent creatures. Our combat system is simple, fast. It's like you're on rollerblades the entire time. Yeah, like reminds me a little bit of like Jet Set Radio yep. in a weird way. Oh yeah. Which did you see? There was a trailer released for basically like a spiritual successor to Jet mm. Grind, Jet Set yeah. Radio. Yeah. Yeah, it looks. Uh, like at first, scene. I thought it was going to be like a remaster, but. But that's how it, it looks. It looks just like those original games. Yeah, so, yeah you, would, you would think it's just the same yeah. game. That's what happens when, when you don't make remaster your game. Someone else does it for you. Yep. It's almost like a Shadow of the Colossus on speed on crack or something. Mm. I'm digging this. Giant spaces, a feel of movement, yeah, it looks cool. Of combat, high stakes battles. 
all come together to bring players something we think is incredibly unique. That is more important to be on to be fair. Yeah. This game is a labor of love for everyone in Art Machine. Excited to bring Solar Ash to PS5 and PS4 later. Looks cool. Okay, yeah. That's the thing. I think this year is going to have crazy juggernauts. We're going to rely on the indies and on some remasters to kind of pad this whole year. Please don't jump scare me. I'm not about that life. <laughs> it's like a Five Nights at Freddy's thing. Are you ready? Yeah, it's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. My nephews will be super excited for this. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it that the guy who made Five Nights at Freddy's he didn't mean for it to be scary when he was first making it or something and it was people were like um taking the mickey out of it saying it looks really scary so he just made it into a horror game i think you're right he kind of created the lore after the response to yeah how the internet took it yeah and my nephew is convinced there's an actual pizza place that's doing this it's like capturing souls and robots and he went down this youtube rabbit hole so he's convinced it's real and i think if you google it someone got shot outside of chuck e cheese and so that's all he needed that's all the internet needed to like combine <laughs> yeah. the story and create it but probably got shot by by the chuck e cheese the chuck e cheese mouse is it right <laughs> yeah i think it was just there's a drive-by outside one and Oh, okay. That's all I need. That does not look scary at all. <laughs> at all. And I get scared easily at games. <laughs> I do find, I mean, I'll give them some credit where it's interesting that they're going with like a... Seems like you can move around in 3D. That was one issue I always had when I very lightly played those games is you're stuck into a room where you can kind of peek around and look at cameras, but that's about it. It looks like you're moving around in this world. Mm -hmm. Up next, let's oh, I forgot about this. This looks good. Oh, odd world, yeah. Hi, I'm Lauren Lanning. Are we at what, six games, five games now? Today, I'm yeah, there's a lot of them. Tour of our newest game, odd world. Well, this the games they showed off world. anyways. Oh, oh, you mean the games, the, the games, are, yeah. Five or six, yeah. Soulstorm, you reprise the role of Abe, accidental hero turned. So they got room for Resistance One, Two, and Three. Then, if they put those As you do battle yeah. in the stream, hell yeah, put them into one, just one, <laughs> one trilogy. Powerful and eternally greedy Gluckens. We really wanted to bring this world to life with what we call 2.9D platform. This game's looking really good too. Immersion for the player. It looks great. This sense of connection is also reinforced through. The Senses haptic feedback, as you'll now be able to feel Abe's heartbeat in high alert. That's interesting. Hmm. So with the haptic well feedback, feeling the heartbeat, it seems like. Must try to save yeah. Them the way. But they are far more than helpless workers looking to be saved. When used effectively, you'll be able to solve puzzles, harness their combined energy, and be given the tools they need to fight alongside you. And there will be times when the extra hands will be needed as you face off. I bet the trophy list on this game is going to be hellish. <laughs> yeah. I can already see that don't let any anyone die. In all oh, stuff. for sure. Against this much larger threat, we gave Abe the ability to scavenge, loot, and pickpocket items from his surroundings and use them to craft an impressive arsenal of his own that he can share with others. You can also play as a non-lethal pacifist or an agent of chaos. I wanted you to have the choice. But there is one iconic ability for our shamanic protagonist, possession. This mystical power allows you to take control of your foes and use their <laughs> Did the other one just shoot a rocket launcher at the ground? Yeah. Access to paths. The odd world universe is a diverse place, and this means these games have so much character. It's it's pretty nuts. That require a little mm, more thought, yeah. patience, and stealth. You'll find dark and dangerous caves, heavily guarded industrial sites, and ancient forgotten lands. 
here we've built lots of opportunities for you to i love the sneaky animations it's, it's just like it was on ps1 yeah it won't be easy if being hunted by an army backed by a shady and wealthy organization isn't bad enough there are also more dangers in the forms of natural obstacles, ancient traps, trials against swarming dark creatures, and industrial hazards that must be dodged, crossed, and avoided. Ultimately, Abe's journey is one of hope, freedom, and truth. There is a rich and engaging narrative to discover in a world full of lies, and we've been able to bring our characters to life like never before. In true Oddworld fashion, your actions in game will decide the fate of Abe and all those you manage to liberate along the way. What's the reason why Abe? I take it that's the main character's name. Abe has the his mouth shut, sewn shut. I'm not sure. It's it's kind of creepy though, isn't it? Yeah. April six. I don't know if they've already given a date out. That's soon as well. Yeah. That was the latest on Oddworld Soulstorm. Here's some exciting news. Active PlayStation Plus members will get the PS5 version for no extra so, cost starting in April. PS5 version for no extra cost starting in April. So that's free on PlayStation Plus? Yeah, if you're a PS5 player, it's I think. Time to catch up wow, nice. Of Spirits, a gorgeous new adventure They're starting to do that more often now with new games, kind of like in a Game Pass right. way. And it'd be interesting to see if this one does end up coming to PlayStation Plus for March. This looks great as well. Yeah. Kenna, right? Or what's Ken, the, yeah, Kenna, yeah, Kenna something to the spirits. Yeah. If this ends up being free on PlayStation Plus, that would be a huge, huge, uh, but, you know, bit of good news. Oh, yeah. And I imagine, yeah, I think we will see them lean into those day and day playstation plus releases with that whole bethesda deal coming into play with xbox they're really you know they have the the throne with these free services so i think playstation should, should lean into this got another dick in the chat that's cool <laughs> it's like pixar level detail it's pretty nuts yeah yeah So far, have any of the games they've shown off been PS5 exclusive? I guess Returnal might be the only one. Yes, yeah, Returnal. But yeah, the rest of all said PS4 and PS5, I think. I don't know what about this. I don't know if this is PS5 only. True. This looks like it could only be next gen or current gen. Yeah. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. That lighting's nuts. I'm a big fan of the slowdown while you're shooting a bow. Any game that lets mm. me do that, like Horizon, when you can yeah. eventually unlock that, that's my jam. Any game that gives me slowdown when I'm aiming at any time yep. is, uh, is nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, just let me just let me turn the game into slow-mo mode anytime <laughs> I want. And I also have a fast-forward option as well. Yeah. Jesus. Uh -oh. Good luck killing that guy. PS5 and PS4. Okay, there. Oh, it comes out in August, so it won't be this PlayStation Plus then. Nice. Oh, I forgot about Deathloop. Deathloop oh, right. First person shooter developed by the team at Arcane. Is that currently timed exclusive for PS for PlayStation or is that console exclusive? I'm not sure actually. I want to say just timed. Cuz it's Bethesda, isn't it? Yeah, this is the last bits of that before the deal, so I think that's why it's still on PlayStation. 
seen so much of this game and I still have no idea what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like what, how it plays, like what the point of it is. It looks really good though. Right. I do enjoy where I'm I can sure watch all... trailers and still not know what's going on. Similar to like Death yeah. Stranding. Yeah. I'm sure this will just bring more questions and answers as well. Again, like James Bond vibes from the the music mm. and the atmosphere. Yeah, very James Bond in it. Yeah, it's a very James Bond song. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's like very much Dishonored, but really focusing on gunplay, which I'm 100% yeah. for. I don't understand. I just don't understand the two assassins looping. I just don't get it. That's all right. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> So it has that dishonored teleporting kind of thing. Yep. And slightly gives me vibes of Wolfenstein, the newer ones, where they, the way they kind of went into the 60s or 70s, like how they kind of had that vibe. Mm-hmm. She also reminds me of a little bit of um, that Kingsman oh, uh, sure. movie series. The sort of glitzy spy thing. Yep. Weird tech. Yeah. Song's over, people. And so is Ramblin' Frank. The rest of you motherfuckers... It looks great. I have no idea what it is still. <laughs> It does look great. I think that's their that's their point. <laughs> so the date might already be established, but I was looking for like an end title date on that. Oh, I want to say it was already if delayed. If this is getting a new trophy list, then I will plan them it again. Oh. This game is honestly just phenomenal. It's so good. Do you think they're promoting just the PS5 upgrade or? See, I think it'll be if, I mean, yeah, because it said captured on PS5, so hopefully 60 frames a second, 4K. But if it comes to plus for free as well, that will be massive for people who haven't played it. Because oh. it's not, it's not an old game. I mean, it's only last year. Yeah. Um, but either way, a PS5 upgrade will be great. The way you feel about Deathloop is how I feel about Final Fantasy. This is this is new. Oh, okay. This is new. Yuffie's not in the remake. Oh. So DLC as well. Ooh. That's a new character. Interesting. This is literally n new Final Fantasy VII. Well, of course he will. They're the ones who blew up the reactors. Cool. So are we seeing bits of part two, you think, or like some kind of DLC thing? Maybe a story expansion or something to... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd... yeah, I'm really not sure, but... Yuffie looks really cool with her sort of Moogle cape. Yeah. Oh, I'm super pumped for this now. <laughs> I I don't think this guy, I think this guy's a new character. I don't recall him from the original. Hmm. But I could be wrong there. I 
This is a big surprise. I did not expect this at all. That guy's blonde hair is jarring. It's like very blonde. <laughs> it just starts. <laughs> Hell yes. That's awesome. Intergrade. Now, let the hunt begin. Damn. Uh -oh. So is that is that American date as in June or June? UK yeah. UK date as in. I, I'm t I'm nice. assuming uh, American. Yeah. Yes. Graphics on PlayStation. Yeah, I was going to say the PS4 version already looks so great that I don't know if I can Ooh, tell yeah. the difference right off the bat. Okay, great Ooh, shadows. Oh, you lighting. can there with the lighting. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, go on then. I'll plan them again. <laughs> they got All you. right, then. <laughs> that looks really good. I mean, it does look great on both, for sure. Right. But... How do you think they price this? Is this a separate thing? Uh... I mean, you've always got to hope it's a free upgrade for people who have already bought it. Same with what they did with Borderlands 3. But I mean, this is looking like a pretty big upgrade. But yeah, I mean, you've got to expect it to be free always, I think. You can expect it all day, but they're trying to make some money here. So. <laughs> and it's, it is a good amount of, you know, hey, updated it might content. surprise you. It might, it might be free for everybody. That'd be dope, but... Mm. But I doubt it. Just Square Enix like money. Yeah, or at least do the... Because like the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, they recently announced it's going to be 10 bucks to upgrade to like the next-gen version. Yeah. At least do something cheaper and not like you have to buy the the, the PS5 version. Oh. Classic. That's pretty fast. <laughs> Just cruising through that menu. Oh, it's got photo mode. Nice. That's a game that definitely could use it. You gotta get on this. You gotta get on this game. It's so good. I don't know, I was saying the way you felt about Deathloop is how I feel about Final Fantasy. I just have no <laughs> idea what's going on. A new episode, so it looks like an expansion. I've got to say the the combat system in this game is one of the best combat systems that I've ever I've ever used. It looks really fun. It is so good. Free. Nice. Very nice. That's how you do it. Yeah, it's a great choice. Awesome. That's awesome. Very unexpected. Well, the PS5 upgrade wasn't, but the uh, a DLC or was. yeah, integrate. And that's our show. We hope you're as excited as we are for what's to come. Maybe there's a one last thing. Yeah, there's got to be. No, maybe not. Just hoping. It's like the Marvel after credits thing, isn't right. it? Right. I don't think that's it. No. Dang. So, I mean, obviously no Ragnarok there. Nope. No. Um. Yeah. I mean, it, for me, obviously the Final Fantasy Seven thing's great. Um. But yeah, there wasn't a lot talked about really. Um. Wasn't a Not lot, a yeah. We amount. got some Returnal, more gameplay there. There's all stuff we already knew, except Final Fantasy. Um, yeah, I mean, wasn't a huge amount, unfortunately. But you know, like we were saying before, that is sometimes how it goes, and uh, we can't hype these things up and then be disappointed when we're not exactly right. So, but right. I don't know. I think, I think every time you watch one of these things, you want to at least be able to come away and say, "Oh, did you see that new thing?" that was announced at least you know one thing and then i mean for me that is final fantasy but whether yeah, that's the same say. for everybody else um 
that that's a different story. But yeah, I think maybe it could have been. That, that, well, I would have liked to have seen more, but yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about Final Fantasy VII. That's really, really great. Um, I think yeah, that's the big I'm one for sure, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that is huge. Um, again, it was very heavily rumored uh, that PS5 upgrades would be coming, but to have a whole new, you know, story expansion, that's really, really cool. Um, be interesting to know if there is a separate uh, trophy list though, because that would be uh, very nice. Do you think it'd be separate, or they would just add the the DLC that I forgot the name of? Like, just add those trophies to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that that'd be right because EA, the way I'll be playing the Yuffie thing, but um, otherwise, I mean, you know, it's such a long game for someone who likes trophies. I probably wouldn't play it again on the PS5 version unless I there was a new trophy list. But obviously, I'll play the new Yuffie stuff because that's new stuff and new story and everything. But if it's the same trophy list, I don't know if I'll I'll play the base game again uh, on the PS5. Yeah, gotcha. I know you're super stoked for Final Fantasy. That was really awesome news for them to. Add that at the yeah. end and then also have the free upgrade if you have the PS4 version on PS5. Um, so they showed off Kenna as well. I'm kind of recapping going through some of these announcements. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We got a release date. Kenna looks amazing. Really, really dope. Um, some odd world attention for Soulstorm. Uh, let's see. Free for PS Plus members as well on PS5, which is, that's really cool. Mm. We got yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's, which is whatever a security breach state of play trailer was uh, showing off um for some uh, for the kiddos uh, sifu sifu looked really good as well sifu looked really unique yeah i'm really mm. digging that um solar ash from the hyperlight drifter devs looked really cool i wasn't big a uh, fan of them spending time on knockout city personally but yeah no yeah yeah it, it, i mean it, it, what so, something i noticed as well with uh, final fantasy is it looks like the then the expansion is only on PS5 because uh, it said it's only available to people who upgrade to PS5. Oh, um, so it looks like that won't be coming to PS4, which is interesting. It means they maybe could go a bit more in detail with some of the animations and the the environments and things like that. But but yeah, they could. But they showed that that engine does great on PS4. So it seems weird to, especially since a lot of people can't get a PS5, so they're kind of limiting their sales but it must be some kind of internal de- decision or Sony's, you know, giving them a couple bucks to make that exclusive. I don't know. Or yeah, they really just can't, you know, do that on PS4, but mm-hmm. that is strange. Uh, what else we get? We got Returnal. Yeah, I got some time. And I mean, that's really it. It was what ended up being about 10 games. Uh, besides the Final Fantasy stuff, nothing really blew my hair back. Um, but Sifu was really cool. Returnal was really cool to get. Uh, we got confirmation or they revealed that it's going to be uh, roguelike with the level traversal, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot got some time there, but yeah, yeah it's coming out soon. We, the game's already out on yeah. PS4. Yeah. Uh, but how'd you feel overall about this, Callum? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you, you just take what, what comes there and... I mean, before this, we didn't have any of this. Inf- well, I mean, we had most of this information, I suppose. But um, at least, you know, we've got something new to look forward to. And um, with, the, with the, the way the climate is at the moment, things are just announced off off of whims. So there's no point in being disappointed because tomorrow something massive might be announced. Or, right. uh, or you know, there's always the next state of play. We've got loads of games to play, lots of things to do in the meantime. So um but yeah i think overall i I definitely wanted to see more have a bit more to talk about um but fun fantasy will definitely definitely do for now how do you feel about there's two juggernauts juggernauts this year we have horizon forbidden west and then god of war ragnarok they're still slated for 2021 do you feel better worse do you think they could have their own state of plays later in the year showing that off or do you think this means we're not going to get them this year um, I'm pretty confident we'll get Horizon, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is weird. You, you really did expect some, at least some update on both of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, we don't know. We might get a state of play in March um, or even April, and that's not far away. And so, yeah, I mean, when was the last state of play we got in December, was it? I want to say yes. Yeah, so I mean, two months in two months' time, there there could be another state of play, and in the grand scheme of things, that isn't that much time 
when you when you're considering God of War and Horizon to wait for information. But they're also so big that they could just be announced or have something come out for them uh, outside of state of play quite easily. So um, it definitely doesn't mean. I don't think there's too much to look into there. I think we'll definitely get something about them uh, soon, but it would have been nice to have seen them tonight. Yeah, I wonder now if they hold, if this year holds at all to what we used to do with E3, where the during that spring, summertime, that's when a lot of big juggernaut stuff would be announced. Do you think they have their state of play then promoting the fall stuff, or is that too close to then, especially with God of War, to reveal a game for the first time, basically, and then mm-hmm. have it ship in fall? Do you think that's too close to start promoting it? I don't know. I mean, I think these games, they don't need a lot of promotion. It's similar to when Bethesda announced Fallout 4. I mean, they announced that at E3 and then it came out the following, what, November? So about four or five months later. Um, So I think, yeah, I mean, it it could be seen as a bit too early, but I think these games are such juggernauts that, that they don't need years of hype or or whatever i think they really can be have their first bit of gameplay shown and then come out three or four months later i think that's definitely feasible yeah you're right and we're in a different time where yeah if you use that older model of when they used to start promotion and when they would reveal stuff it's just not the same anymore you can literally have a stream at any day or just drop a trailer and that's still going to take over the internet and provide you all the hype and promotion you need so it's just but now we're in this weird you know just like we were the ps5 we have no way to guess when stuff is going to be revealed because, and especially you have the extra fold of Sony just doing what they want to do and deciding, you know, on a Sunday, they're going to drop this God of War trailer. You know, it's, they, they do that, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's just very strange because we're in this weird time. It's hard to, it's hard to predict this kind of thing now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. But uh, yeah, I was bummed not seeing God of War Ragnarok, but I also don't think it's coming out this year, but for sure, I think, just like you're saying, Horizon uh, should probably make it. If not, we'll see some kind of um, in-depth gameplay this year for it, for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's so uh, we can end our talk here for the state of play of February. Um, is it February? Is it March? I don't know how time works. Yeah, it's February. Uh, it's, yeah, it's February for a little bit. Okay. Um, I actually forgot that February doesn't have like f- the full amount of days in it the other day. So you're right. I was thinking, God, <laughs> I was thinking, God there's still loads left of this month. And then there's like three days left. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of odd yeah so uh, yeah he's hoping another two months three months we'll get that state of play or they just show off uh, ragnarok in a wired magazine article or something they they do that so cal mm-hmm. will end it there for the for the state of play stream where can they find you online uh bad Mumbo at twitter um if if you really really want to yes and i know you want to everybody wants to and you can follow the show as well on twitter at plastic art pod that is it for us this week we'll see you guys uh this saturday when we stream the next episode of L2R2 PlayStation Podcast. We'll see you until then. Bye-bye.